Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO and this is Scary Scars Shared. In these interviews, I ask real project managers to share in around 10 minutes what they have learned from their most challenging project management experiences. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Elsie Rogers, who's going to share some of her experiences with us. Elsie, I'd like you to start, if you could, by giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. First of all, thank you, Ken, for having me on. Um, I started out my uh, career uh, uh, as a pro project manager, program manager about 23 years ago at Lloyd's TSB and it afforded me the opportunity to work across many business and IT uh, change programs across cards, lending, portfolio management, and uh, just name it, wholesale infrastructure type delivery programs. And then I went on to do other things across the financial services, uh, insurance and banking, where my last couple of roles have been concentrated on red programs. OK, so typically what sort of size teams have you been working with? So my last couple of roles as a PMO lead, it was a massive piece of work. Um, and then I was leading about three to four PMOs, delivering a large, complex uh, regulatory program. So thinking back over your project management career then, can you give us an example of a scar? So something that went wrong on a project that you were managing and what you learned from it? Absolutely. Uh, we know as part of program management, um, the manpower plan um, is a key item and that often requires constant iteration of reviewing the manpower plan to make sure that the right skill sets are there, to make sure the people are utilised, they're prioritised across the piece of work. On this particular occasion, the management had decided to change uh, the direction of the solution, um, which meant that the resources on that particular program should have been assigned to other programs. Unfortunately, there was a communication uh, and engagement issue there. And um, that was a scary thing for me when I discovered that people who were specifically employed to work on this uh, piece of work were no longer required. And it was really hard to convince other areas that they should take them on board because they were actually sitting on our budget, which meant we needed to, to pay for them. Um, it also meant that we were overrunning, the bond rate was high, and I had to utilize my uh, interpersonal skills to try and convince and negotiate um, across the piece for these people to be absorbed within other programs. Eventually, most of them were, but the sad thing was we had to ramp down the other uh, aspects of the program in order to avoid an extra burn rate because that wouldn't have looked good in terms of uh, cost. The resources that you were looking to redeploy, were those mm. people who were permanent employees of the organisation or were they contractors, consultants, those kinds of people? They were a mix of both contractors and permanent people. OK, so for contractors and consultants, I imagine you have a, a notice period, a relatively short notice period, but a notice yes. period nonetheless. But for permanent employees, obviously, uh, you can't just remove the cost. You, you they're, they're, Well, they're permanent employees, so they're, they're, they're there. The lesson learned was that was not the way the programme was supposed to end. I would have actually preferred the programme ramping down, people offboarded properly. Uh, we had a big thank you to everyone and then the programme would have been disbanded in that way. Um, the one thing that I know that I learned from it was engagement was key. So I stood back and I thought to myself, how did I miss this? What was what was missing? And I want to stress how important it is to have those corridor conversations outside of your key meetings, because maybe that corridor conversation, having to ask the right questions all the time, it may sound like you're, you're bothering people, but I think having constant conversation with the right people at the right level, you find out that you won't really miss anything. So for me, it wasn't also a blame game. I had to take a step back to say, what could I, how could I have engaged better? What was missing? And I learned from that situation. So in a nutshell, we didn't really run over budget uh, because we found a way to fix the issue um, because we ramped down the program real quickly and eventually those other parts of the organization absorbed those resources. But it was a tough call. It wasn't something that was very easy. It was very stressful. 
I can imagine. So um, thinking back over that experience then and what you learned from it, what would you recommend to other people that they should do if they find themselves in a situation like that or better still to avoid arriving in the, that situation in the first place? Communication is key. So you look at your governance and find out how can you make communication more effective outside of your core work group sessions, work stream meetings, establishing very good relationships with people because it opens the door for you to talk to people outside of those meetings. Also, was I actually missing out on any key meetings that was happening? Maybe yes. So I actually spoke to my uh, program exec to say, I think I should have been plugged into this meeting because if I was plugged in, I would have picked this up because naturally, that manpower plan fell under my remit and I would have actually fixed the problem. So communication is a big thing and people need to establish relationships. It does help. Also working probably better with delivery managers could have helped. Um, maybe that relationship, something was missing there. Um, so again, collaborative working across um, across the piece, um, making sure all the loopholes um, expose, actually, you know, we plug into them. Elsie, thanks for your time, your honesty and your insights. So today we heard from Elsie about how she recovered from a challenging project experience and what she learned from it. But my challenge to you is what can you learn from Elsie's experience? What will you do differently in your projects as a result? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this interview, please let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both, or by sharing it with others on social media. If you want to share your scars in one, let me know. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for listening.